Welcome back to my channel, everyone. Today, we're gonna to learn all about classifying quadrilaterals. You're gonna learn all about the vocabulary words you need to know, like what quadrilateral is, all of the different specific types of quadrilaterals, and you're gonna learn a new word called hierarchy that I'll explain all about in the video. Okay, let's dig in. Okay, so first things first, we need a little bit of vocabulary here. So the word quadrilateral, just if we look at the first part of the word, quad, that means four. And so we're going to be talking about classifying four-sided shapes in this lesson. And we also need to learn about the word hierarchy. Let me write that down. It's probably a new vocabulary, vocabulary word for you. And all it means is a way of classifying things where we start with the most broad word and we get more and more specific as we go down on some branches. And I'll show you all about that with another example before we move into shapes. Okay, so just to make sense of the new vocabulary word hierarchy, here is just an example that doesn't have to really do with math, but just to teach you that word, I made one about European dog breeds. We've got some different categories. So the European dog breeds is the most general broad term. And then as we get more specific, we have herding dogs, we have hound dogs, we have sporting dogs, and we have working dogs. So see how those are more specific. And we can get even more specific by showing different types of dogs in each category. So here we have some specific types of dogs. So in the herding category, we can get more specific and say, well, there are some German shepherds and border collies, then we can get more specific with the uh, European dog breeds that are hound dogs. And I picked another two specific types that are basset hounds and beagles. And I could give you even more dog breeds in the uh, hound dog category, but I thought I'd just start with two for each category. So then the sporting dogs, we could get more specific and say there are the Rhodesian Ridgebacks and Brittany Spaniels. And finally, in the working group, we can put some specific dog breeds of the Boxer and the Bull Mastiff. So hopefully that taught you a little bit about a hierarchy. It starts with the most broad term, which is just European dog breeds, and then moves to specific types of dog breeds like herding, hound, sporting, and working. And then it moves into some specific types of dog breeds like a German Shepherd. Okay, so now we're going to think about a hierarchy for classifying shapes, and we're going to be classifying quadrilaterals. So at the beginning of the video, I mentioned that these are four-sided shapes. So that's the most broad or general or vague description for these shapes. There's lots of shapes with four sides. We need to kind of get more and more specific as we go down this hierarchy. So let's think about some different branches or different types of quadrilaterals. You can pause the video and start thinking of different four-sided shapes. Okay, so you might have said a lot of different things like square, rectangle, trapezoid, rhombus, lots of different types of shapes. Some of them, one uh, a little bit more specific we could get is something called a parallelogram. 
So those are going to be shapes that have opposite sides are parallel. So we can draw them. I like to draw them like this, just to show an example of any shape. It doesn't have to look like this, but any shape that has opposite sides are parallel. And there's different types of shapes that have parallel sides. So we're gonna be digging more into those too in a second to get those a little bit more specific. There's also a type of shape that has only one pair of parallel sides. And that is called a trapezoid. Those are a little bit different. I always kind of think of those as being a little bit lonely of a shape because it's a little bit different than all the other quadrilaterals. So those, if you, if you don't remember, look like, they can look like this. And so they have this side and this side are parallel. And so it's just got that one pair of parallel sides. These two are not. And a test I like to do to check for parallel is by looking at those two sides. If you kept drawing them, are they going to cross? Are they going to intersect? Oh, those will. So those are not parallel. But these two sides, if you kept drawing them forever and ever, they would, can, they, they would never touch. All right, so let's keep going. So I think we can stop this branch with trapezoid because there's not really any more way to be specific about these trapezoids, but there are some different parallelograms. So shapes that have two sets of parallel sides. Let me write that down. Two pairs of parallel sides. So let's think about those. There are, can you think of any that have parallel sides? Okay, some of you said rectangle. Those have two sets of parallel sides. See, we can do the test on it. These two, if you kept going, they're like train tracks. They would never touch. And then these two, if you kept those going, they would never touch. They're like train tracks. So yes, a rectangle is a specific type of parallelogram. And of course, it's a quadrilateral because it has four sides. Okay, another type of parallelogram is called a rhombus. And that, let me draw it really quickly. That will do the test. Does it have two pairs of parallel sides? Let's see. These two sides, yep. If you kept them going, I know they're diagonal, but they would never cross, they would never intersect. And these two would never cross or intersect. That's a great trick to do with pencils or just whatever you have. You could even use your fingers to test that out. Okay, so those are two types of parallelograms. All right, and there's actually one more of the most specific type of parallelogram and it can also be described as a rectangle and a rhombus. So the cool thing about this is a rectangle definition is just that opposite sides are parallel and congruent or equal. And so this side is equal. Let me make some marks on this. This side is equal to this side and this side is congruent to this side, okay? And then a rhombus definition is just that all sides are congruent and opposite sides are parallel, of course, since it's uh, labeled under the parallelogram. And so can you think of a shape that, ha that falls under both of those descriptions? So all the sides are the same, 
opposite sides are parallel and opposite sides are congruent. Okay, great. Hopefully you thought of the square. It's so cool that a square can be described as a special type of rectangle and a special type of rhombus. It also can be described as a parallelogram because it's got those, you know, two sides that are parallel. We could do the test really quick. Yep, those two are like train tracks and those two are like train tracks. And it's also can be described as a quadrilateral because it's got those four sides. A square can really be described as a lot of different things. It's the most specific type of parallelogram there. All right, so now we just need to take a look at a different type of graphic organizer to classify quadrilaterals. So this one has a Venn diagram and it also has this circle over here that just has a trapezoid by itself. So let's just kind of take a minute to study it a little bit and we might be able to figure out what this mystery is up here. So on this side, we have a Venn diagram that has a rectangle and a rhombus. And it looks like the square is in the middle of those two. So it can be described as a rectangle and a rhombus. And then to figure out this question mark, I want you to think about, is there a word that would describe all of these things? What do you think? All right, so hopefully you came up with the word parallelogram because all of these shapes have parallel sides. So they can all be described as parallelograms. Great job. All right, so here's another way it could be presented. It could be that you're given all vocabulary words, no examples. And so up at the top, the most broad or vague term is quadrilateral. So these are all going to be four-sided shapes. This side is all filled in. So we've got parallelograms, shapes that have parallel sides. Then a little bit more specific, rectangles have parallel sides. And a rhombus has parallel sides. And then a little bit more specific, or the most specific, is a square because it's a special type of rectangle and a special type of rhombus. So what do you think is the mystery? What shape does not belong in this branch, but just kind of all by itself? Okay, great. A lot of you thought of the word trapezoid. That one just has one pair of parallel sides. Let me draw it real quick. Okay, it has one set of parallel sides. The other two sides will eventually cross, so they are not like train tracks. Great job. Okay, so I hope you learned a lot in this video. I hope you learned all the different types of are ways to classify shapes and quadrilaterals. I hope you feel more confident with this type of geometry and I hope to see you on the next video.